Good evening, Victory Baptist Church. It is good to be in the Lord's house tonight. This is Wednesday, and we hope and pray that you've had a good week thus far as we're trying to navigate through these very different and strange times. We're just thankful for the Lord Jesus Christ. We're thankful for the promises that he gives to us, and we're just going to keep on going. I don't know anything else to do but just to keep on going and keep trusting the Lord. Uh, this evening, before I bring you the message <clears throat> from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, uh, if you have your Bibles there, we'll get everybody uh, situated on the couch or wherever you're listening, and get your pencils out and your piece of paper to take some notes and uh, before we do that, just a couple quick announcements. Uh, one of the things we have made mention of several times now uh, is the online giving. Uh, it is an option that uh, you don't have to do it, but it is certainly uh, something that would be very convenient for you to do. Uh, and if you say, well, I don't know if I can do that, or I, th th then don't worry about it. Uh, but we do want to make it available. We've had uh, people ask over the years about doing it, and we just kind of put it off. Uh, but now is one of those situations where it makes it a little bit easier. So if you go to our church website at victorychurchhanover.org, and then right there at the top, right in the center, it says online giving. If you click that uh, option there, it will take you to a secure site that we use uh, for uh, our bookkeeping and things of that nature. Uh, it'll take you to that secure website, and then you can fill in your information. You can make a credit card donation there, or you can do the ACH, uh, which is from your checking account, uh, and it'll walk you through all of those options that are there, and then you can just go there and make your uh, giving whenever you want. If you have any questions, just give, uh, give us a call at the office, and uh, Miss Jess will be uh, happy to uh, answer those uh, questions for you about that system. But anyhow, just convenient, something very convenient. But we still have people mailing in uh, their tithes and offerings and, uh, and then bringing them here to the church. And then Sunday, now that we've been doing the drive-in church services, we make it available that you can on Sunday morning as you exit the church parking lot. Uh, usually Brother Matt's standing there with the offering bucket, not a bag anymore, but the offering bucket and you can just throw that in. And uh, boy, we had a really good time on Easter and it was just good to see everybody. We had a really good number uh, of folks in here, uh, upwards almost 60 cars in the parking lot. Uh, and so, uh, you know, a lot of those cars had two, three, four, five people in them. Uh, and so we had a really good number for our Easter service. And it was really good to see everyone. Uh, and again, if you can make it out uh, on the Sunday mornings, we'll be doing that again this Sunday, uh, Sunday morning at 1030. Uh, if you would arrive, uh, you don't have to arrive real early, okay, so about that 10 o'clock or a little after, uh, but you can come and get you a parking spot. You can park anywhere uh, you like uh, here at the, uh, at the church. There'll be some people kind of directing around, uh, but I'll be preaching from the front porch, so most people try to get uh, one of the views that kind of looks back here. You you can park into the lower lot. You can park in the upper lot. Uh, we even have people parking the grass there uh, to make it, uh, you know, to where people can get through. So we're just going to keep on doing what we can to bring people to the Lord's house. But it just feels good to be able to get up, get dressed, and go to church, uh, even if we are sitting in our cars. Uh, when you come, uh, we'll let you know the radio station 91.3. You can tune that in. But when the weather's nice, you can have your windows down. We have speakers set up out there. Most people don't even need that radio station. Uh, but if it would be raining or something like that, we'll still be doing it. Uh, and then you'll just want to tune into the radio station. Uh, so remember, uh, remember that's coming this Sunday at 10 30. Uh, and then also, uh, if you can't make it, we, we do still have, uh, the, uh, the regular live streaming. Uh, we had, a, we had an issue with it Sunday morning, uh, but we, we feel we've got that resolved. So we're thankful, uh, for our camera crew. Brother Tony's been really, uh, really working at that. So we really appreciate him making all this stuff happen. I'm in front of the camera, but I couldn't do it without him behind the camera. And then on Sunday mornings, Brother Matt's been helping out, uh, Brother Tony. And so we've been, we've been doing that. Brother Tony and Brother Matt 
Matt's been doing the youth, uh, the youth services. So that's something uh, new that we've been doing. I think uh, this would be the third week now coming. Uh, but that's something that we we're going to bring to you uh, on Sunday mornings at 8.30 uh, on either YouTube, the church YouTube channel, or on the Facebook. You can go and uh, be something for your kids there that they can uh, have a good Bible lesson, sing some songs, and, and uh, still get to be able to minister to the young people. So uh, keep that in mind. And so they're up all the time. You can go back and watch past ones and things like that. Uh, but watch on the church YouTube uh, for the preaching on Wednesdays and Sundays, Sunday morning. 10 30 sunday night at 6 p.m and then wednesday at 7 p.m uh, that's available and then the phone call system i just talked to one of our seniors today uh the other day we went uh myself brother tony brother matt we kind of broke up and all went around and passed out some bags and just some nice things to uh to give to some of our uh shut-ins and those that are maybe just a little bit difficult to get out uh so we put some bags together and i i talked to one of the uh one of our seniors about that phone call system and uh, I'll just mention this to you when you call in uh, he called in and he just heard music playing and he thought well maybe it was put on hold and so he just stopped he didn't do it I said no no no, no. just keep on listening because as soon as the music plays it, the preaching will come on okay so uh, so do that call in that number again that number is 717-287-9508 287, that's area code 717, 287 9508. So pass that around. Uh, and, and not just to those that don't have internet, but if something were to happen, like Sunday, Sunday morning, uh, when we couldn't get the, uh, the live stream to, to work, uh, Brother Tony was still able to get that on the phone message. So if something happens, Go to that phone call and just put your, put it on speaker and you know let it go. So remember uh, remember that and remember to just to check on people. You know, call them, see how they're doing, and uh, even if you don't know them, just you know give them a call and and uh, talk to them. Maybe you could answer some of these questions about the technology or something like that, whether the phone or the internet or something like that. Maybe just help them out a little bit. And so we're just trying to be an encouragement one to another, and uh, you know we're just going to keep on doing. The work that God's called us to do. I would ask before I preach, uh, remember uh, the family of Brother Paul Cover. You'll remember years ago, Brother Paul Cover uh, was, uh, was here active. Uh, his health over the last uh, few years has been declined, so he could not come. He's been in the Brethren home. He just passed away last Thursday, and uh, yesterday on Tuesday, we did his uh, funeral service. He was buried there uh, in Manchester at the uh, Manchester Baptist Church up on the hill. Uh, it's where his uh, wife was buried uh, back in 92. But uh, Brother Paul lived uh, 87 years it was. He was born July 30th, uh, 1932, and uh, just full of life. He was a good fella and uh, was trusting the Lord as his Savior. So just remember his family. And we got to minister to them. And uh, I, I'm hoping maybe when all this this is said and done, we'll be able to talk to him. I talked to one of the grandchildren who was very interested in talking about uh, things of the Bible. So, uh, you know, just keep that, keep that in prayer. All right, let's get into the message uh, here this evening as we get ready for our Bible message. I, you know, maybe a little bit long on the announcements, but you're not getting the bulletin anymore. You're not getting the screens. You're not getting the, you know, so I want to give you some of those announcements. But let's get into the message uh, tonight in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, and we're just going to read two verses tonight, and then we'll pray. The Bible says in verse 14, 2 Corinthians 5, 14, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth, that is, from here on out, uh, henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. I want to talk to you this evening about the motivation of the Christian life. The motivation of the Christian life. What keeps us going when the chips are down, when uh, everything else has changed around us? What keeps us going? The motivation of the Christian life. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. We ask for your blessing. We ask that you'd speak to the hearts of your people. God, I pray you'd encourage them. I, I miss everybody. You know I do. 
And Lord, I'm just asking that you would encourage your people, keep them strong, keep them thinking about you. I pray your Holy Spirit uh, would be strong in their presence and around their homes. And Lord, as they, uh, as they grow in you and read their Bible and pray and, and listen to good gospel music and, and just continue to keep on going, Lord, that you'd give them the strength. Provide for them, Lord. We, uh, we think about our families, the work and the, the jobs and the schedulings and things that have changed and hours being cut back. Lord, we know that you can provide. Lord, we know that you can give your people what they need. And Lord, we're just asking that in the name of Jesus. Lord, we'll give you all the praise, all the honor and the glory goes to you in your precious name. Amen. You know, under the stress of uh, persecution, and under the stress of just difficult times, uh, it's often that uh, people will uh, maybe loosen up a little bit. And when we're talking about loosen up, I mean in our, in our, uh, in our spirituality, in our commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, sometimes when things don't go the way that we want them to, and certainly in a, in a time like this uh, where everything around us has changed, it could be... Uh, more convenient to just slack up and and not read our Bibles, not uh, be praying and fasting and doing the things that God would want us to do. But but friend, I, I encourage you, it's at these times that we need to do that more and get closer to the Lord right now uh, while the times are getting tough so that we don't slip away and slip back and backslide and get out of the will of God. Listen, we might not be able to, to go about like we usually do, but bless God, we can still be in the will of God. We can still be in a good uh, fellowship with God. And we can still please Him with our lives that we live. And so that's what we want to talk about this morning as, as we read this scripture. And, and certainly the Apostle Paul will talk a little bit about what he's talking about here, about living for Christ. He, he says that, that we should live for the one who died for us. And I, I agree with that. That's a good amen right there, uh, that we should live for the one who died for us. And what Paul is doing here in this passage of Scripture is he's encouraging these Corinthian believers who certainly have been persecuted. Uh, they're living in a very carnal society, very materialistic society. Corinth was a very wealthy Roman province. Uh, they were very wealthy. And so uh, a lot of commerce came in there, big hustle-bustle city. Wasn't like Hanover, you know. Uh, wasn't like some of the little towns that we like. I, I like a little town. I like a small town, even smaller than Hanover. I, I like dirt roads, and I, I like getting up into the mountains and different places like that. Uh, but this certainly wasn't one like that. This was, this was a big city and a lot of trade coming in, a lot of buying, selling, and a lot of things like that going on. And so what's happening in a very materialistic society, a very carnal society, a pagan society, is these Christians were under persecution. Now, we can see that. Let's go back real quick to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. When we see Paul in his second letter is trying to encourage these people from a spiritual perspective. He kind of talks about how he suffered and how he's been going through some hard times. And he's trying to encourage the church to stay strong in Christ and spiritual. In the first letter that Paul wrote, 1 Corinthians, he deals with sin after sin after problem after problem uh, in the church because of their carnality. And, and here's what he's saying is, because you've not been in your relationship with Christ like you should, because you haven't been reading your Bible and praying and serving and doing what you're supposed to do and keeping your mind on Christ and your heart clean and your heart on Christ, you've been slipping away and backsliding. And so in this second letter that he writes, he's, he's more or less maybe a little, I'm not going to say soft, as in he was stepping around the, the tulips, but, but he was a little more tender in, in trying to get them to develop more of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ so that they wouldn't do those wrong things. And so here's what he says in, in chapter number 1. He starts out his second letter by saying, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them that are uh, in, in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted. 
For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And so he'll go on uh, by saying these, these similar things is, is that uh, they're suffering. And he says, I know it's tough. I, I know it's difficult. I know you're a Christian in a very carnal world trying to do right. I know it's tough. I know that there's suffering, the persecutions that are coming and the things that are done there. He says, I know it's difficult, but you got to keep going. you got to keep your relationship with Christ strong. And certainly in these days, we need to keep our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ strong. And, and let me encourage you this. Now listen, uh, you're not here, uh, but you're still part of this church. We're all part of the church of Jesus Christ. And, and although we can't come here as a church family, we're still a church family. We're, we're, still, we're still moving forward in that direction. But I want to say this, uh, as you come in, you know, maybe to drive in church on Sunday morning, you, you gather in your home on Sunday night for Sunday night church, uh, on Wednesday for Wednesday evening church, and your Bible studies at home, and your, and your Bible reading, and family Bible time, family prayer time, all that. Don't stop doing that. It's in these times that it can be very easy to slip away from doing the good things. But we need to stay as much uh, committed as we can and stay into the good habits of, of the church. That's why we're still doing, hey, you still have the opportunity to come to church on Sunday morning. You still have the opportunity for church on Sunday night. And you still have the opportunity for church on Wednesday night. It's just now it's up to you in your home to gather everybody in and sit down and make it a point that that's a special time. Don't have your cell phone on. Uh, you know, don't have uh, something in the oven that you're worried about. Don't, don't be thinking about anything else. Focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and let me say this in these times. Be very careful of other influences in these times. Because here's something that I have found. Now, now let me say this. There's a lot of good preaching that is, that is out there. A lot of the, the sister churches and friends, that, that people that have been here to preach, you can go on their church websites, their church Facebooks, and you can get some good, solid preaching, singing, and boy, there's a lot. And there's a lot that I'm listening to. I think maybe now we're listening to it a little bit more uh, than we have before because we're, you know, we're not here at our church. So uh, you, you're listening to our broadcasts, but you might be listening to other broadcasts. And that, that's, that's well and good. But make sure that it's good, sound doctrine. If you have any questions, please give me a call. I'm, hey, I'm still your pastor. I still am here to help you and guide you and help you with some things. Uh, but there's some stuff out there that you ought not to be listening to. There's, listen, not everybody on the Internet with the Bible is good. Not everybody on Facebook that holds up the Bible and says, I'm here to tell you about Jesus, you ought to be listening to. There's a whole lot of foolishness out there and a whole lot of false doctrine. So stay with your local church. Stay with your local church. And then some of the friends and people that we've met over the years, you know, if you have any questions, give me, give me a holler. You know, and I'll be more than happy to direct you to some really good ministries that got some great music, great preaching that'll, that'll be a help to you. But as we go into this time, stay close to Christ. Don't, don't be wandering off somewhere into the bushes. Stay on the good road, okay? And that's exactly what Paul is trying to encourage these people with, is that I know it gets tough, but you got to maintain. you got to stay the course. And here in this passage of Scripture, there's so much I could talk about this morning, but just a couple minutes, I'm going to give you just a couple things right here, okay? The motivation for the Christian life. What was Paul encouraging the church about the motivation. Well, right there he starts his letter uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians 1. He talks about peace. He talks about mercy. He talks about grace. He talks about the God of all comfort, uh, how that we have an eternal hope. Uh, here in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, or where we just read, uh, verse number 1 talks about if it, we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, that is, if we died today, we have a building of God, a house, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So he, he's again, throughout this whole book, he's saying that we have a God in heaven who saved us. And no matter what happens here, even if I die today, I know that I've got a home in heaven that, that isn't taken away. And you know what? There might be a lot of places that you can't go right now 
that you're restricted to go. And there's a lot of places that might be quarantined and shut down. But I'm going to tell you what, they can't quarantine heaven. Amen. Listen, they can't quarantine my God. They can't quarantine the throne. And the worst case scenario, if I died today, bless God, I still got a place to go in heaven. And that's what Paul was trying to encourage the church about. Now, let me give you three things. The first thing he says in verse number 14, he says, for the love of Christ constraineth us. I want to talk about the love of Christ. What motivates us to keep on going? I woke up the other day thinking about this scripture, and that's why I'm preaching it to you. God speaking to my heart with it, and he woke me up, and uh, I was, I don't know, it was probably 5, 5.30 in the morning. Woke me up, and, and I had my phone there by my bed, and I got a Bible app on my phone. And, uh, you know, real early in the morning, I just, had to, I just had to read that scripture a couple times and just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What keeps us going? The Bible says the love of Christ. He says, for the love of Christ constraineth us. That, that word constrain uh, literally means to, to, to hold, to get a hold of. Uh, the idea would be, uh, let's say there's a, uh, a child about to cross the road and, and you grab a hold of his arm and you're constraining him. You're saying, no, 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 you come over this way. Don't go out there in the road. You come over here. Uh, a, a police officer who would be uh, arresting, uh, handcuffing a, a, a convict who wants to run away, but the police officer says, no, you need to come over here. The love of Christ, not my love for him, but his love for us. It kind of wraps me up and pulls me off to the side and says, no, you don't need to be thinking about that right now. You need to be thinking about what I did for you. No, don't, don't, think, don't worry about that problem over there. Uh, be constrained. Come over here and think about what I've done for you. And here's what the Apostle Paul said. When I get down, when I get discouraged, when I get wayward maybe in my mind or my heart, I think about how much Jesus loved me, how he would leave the portals of glory, leave 24 hours a day, seven days a week for all of an eternity, leave all the worship that they were worshiping him there in heaven and come down to earth and be born in a manger in poverty, in slavery. Uh, the, the Jews were slaves to the Romans. And be born into that mess, into, a, into an old uh, uh, poor family. Uh, and, and how that all of that, all of that, he loved us. You say, friend, why does he do that? I'll tell you why he does it, because he loves us. He would do all of that. He would leave heaven for you, friend, all because he loves you. He would spend his life, 33 years on this earth, to walk about and teach and preach and, and to be the best example of a human that could ever be. And the Bible says that he loved us so much that he died on the cross for our sins. My friend, when I think about the love of Christ, how much he loves me, and listen, not just when I'm good, he loves me when I'm bad. I think about that little song we used to sing, Jesus loves me, this I know for the Bible tells me so. Well, one of those verses we would sing was Jesus loves me when I'm good. When I do the things I should. But Jesus loves me when I'm bad, though it makes him very sad. And you know what I'm thankful today is that no matter what's going on in my life, I know Jesus loves me. And I want you to know that Jesus loves you, friend. He loves you more than any father could love a child. He loves you more than any grandparent could love their family. He loves you more than anything in this world. Listen, he, he loves you and he cares for you. And that love that our Heavenly Father has for us should motivate us to keep going. Now, we talk about the love of Christ, but let me show you the sacrifice of Christ. The Bible says in verse number 14 that the love of Christ constraineth us because. Now he's going to talk about what his love did for us. How much he loved us. He didn't just say he loved us. He showed us that he loved us. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave. His love, his affection, prompted a change in his action. He loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus loved us so much that, here in verse number 14, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. You and I, listen, as humans, we are dead in our trespassing and sins. Ephesians chapter 2. We are dead in our trespassing and sins. 
And, and therefore, we are condemned to a devil's hell. But my friend, listen, the Lord Jesus Christ knew we were dead, and that's why he died for all. The Bible says in verse number 14 that he died for all. Look at verse number 15. He died for all. Listen, the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ is this. He died for you and I to pay for our sins. The Lord Jesus Christ didn't sin. You and I sin. We think things, we say things, and we do things that displease God and that are wrong. Those are sins. Our sin condemns us to a devil's hell. There's nothing that can take away that sin. We sing a song, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The Bible teaches us in the book of Hebrews that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. That means somebody has to pay with their life. They have to die for sin. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. But listen, only Jesus Christ could forgive us of our sin for eternity. And that's why when he sacrificed his life for us, he laid his life down so you and I could be saved forever in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when I think about how he loved me so much that he left everything and came down here to this earth to prove his love to me and to give me his word, to give me his example of how I should live my life, when I think about how much he loved me and the sacrifice he made, I'm going to tell you, it makes me want to just keep on going. You know, I think a lot about the actions of others. I, I think about, uh, you know, when I look at our flags, you know, I look at the American flag, I think of the soldiers who died so that I could be free. I don't take that lightly. Uh, just the other day, I was driving, I told you on Tuesday, driving down to uh, do that funeral uh, for Brother Paul Cover. I drove by the, uh, the cemetery uh, there in Jefferson, PA, uh, where Corporal Henry Markle is buried. Now, he's the uh, uncle of Brother Bob Wolf, who's a member of our church here. Uh, he was the one that we did uh, his funeral down at Arlington National Cemetery uh, just last year. And, and I, I, I drove right by, his, his tombstone is right there by the road. And as I kind of drove, there was nobody behind me, so I just slowed down and I looked over and I saw uh, Corporal Earl uh, Henry Markle right there on the, on the tombstone. And I, I just, again, I just had to say thank you because there in the Korean War, you know, he was fighting and all the soldiers that have fought for our freedoms, that means something. And it should mean something to us when somebody sacrifices for us. Our country is in a big old mess. One of the reasons, listen, obviously the sin that's in the world, but listen, one of the big reasons is that there is no gratitude, there's no appreciation for what has been done for us, and a selfish spirit has developed in, in our society, and so that people aren't thankful for what was done for them, they're not thankful for the people that have sacrificed for them, and it causes a lot more more sin because people are selfish. They only want for themselves. We need to stop and say, Lord, I'm thankful for what you did for me. You know what? I'm going to be the best Christian I can be. I'm going to be the best dad, the best husband, the best pastor, whatever it is you do. Just be the best. When we think about the love of Christ, the sacrifice of Christ, it should prompt us to do the right things and to keep on going. The last thing, thirdly, is the promise of Christ. Look at what it says in verse number 15. The Bible says, for, uh, and, and, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. See, the Bible doesn't just say that Jesus died. It says he rose again. You say, well, what's the promise? Well, here's the promise. Jesus Christ said that they would crucify him, that he would be buried, but he also said that he would come back to life on the third day. Now, we just celebrated Easter here, so it's fresh in our mind that he rose from the dead. You know what that means? It means he kept his promise. Listen, Jesus knew all along what was going to happen, that he would die, that he would be buried, and that he would rise again. And he made that promise. And listen, death can't stop our Savior from keeping his promise. And listen, that should tell us as God's people that there's nothing that we'll ever face. There's no trial to, so big. There's no circumstance so big. There's no virus so strong and potent that would keep your God and my God from keeping his promise to his people. I'm thankful for that. That when I think about the fact that God keeps his promise even through death, oh, child of God, listen, there's nothing we can't do. 
Listen, that, that verse that Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. That means I can live the Christian life through Jesus Christ which strengthens me because he promised he'd always be there for me and he always keeps his promise. You know, I can, I can be the Christian father and, and husband and pastor and American citizen. I can be the employer, the, the, the friend, the neighbor that God wants me to be because Christ lives in me. And if I'm reading my Bible, praying, getting close to him, he'll show me what to do. He'll show you what to do, friend. And, and listen, this is the motivation that Paul's trying to encourage this church. We don't have to slack up and backslide and get off the way just because problems come. No, we can keep on going because of Jesus Christ. See, the death of Jesus Christ does two things. Here, 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 here's, what it, here's what it does. And Paul says this in verse number 14 and verse number 15. Watch what he says. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. He Notice the phrase, we judge. We, we judge. What he's saying is we think differently. It, when I stop and think about what Christ did for me, I think about the, the sacrifice that he gave. I think about the love that he gives, the promises that he keeps. It causes me to think differently. I judge. I think you know what? If, if, if Christ died for all, then that means everybody was a sinner. That means I was a sinner. I needed a Savior, and He died for me. It causes me to think differently when I think about all that Christ has done. And, and it causes me to not look at the problem, but to look at my Jesus. It causes me not to want to stray, but to stay close to my Lord who stayed close to me. It causes me to think differently. When everything else is kind of going crazy, I kind of think, you know what, God, you got this under your control. Nothing's ever out of God's control. It might be out of mine and yours, but it's not out of his. And so, so here the Bible says that we, are, uh, we, we think differently. And then look at what it says in verse 15, we live differently. The Bible says, and that he died for all, that they which should live should not henceforth live unto themselves. He says this. When we get saved, when we trust Christ as our personal Savior, we realize what Christ did for us. We think differently now. We, we think about his, his love and His sacrifice and His promise. And when I think about that, that from henceforth, that from the time I got saved till now and until Jesus comes, that they which live, that is to live in Christ, to live the new life of Christ, should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto Him which died for them rose again. So here's what, here's what this does. This motivation, when I'm thinking about it, it calls me to think differently and I live differently because here's what I think. You know what? If Jesus did all this for me, I should do it for him. Jesus died for me, I should live for him. That's why Paul, when he wrote to the church in, in Rome, in Romans chapter 1, he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He says, I'm beseeching you, I'm calling you near on behalf of the grace and mercy that God gave you because he was gracious to you. Present your body. And so, friend, here's what I want to encourage you tonight. As we wrap up this message and, and our Bible time together, I, I want you to think about this. How am I living for Christ? How, what am I doing for him? Uh, things might be different, but that doesn't mean that we don't live for Christ. That doesn't mean that we stop being dedicated Christians. That doesn't mean that we stop our faithfulness. It doesn't mean that we stop our Bible reading, our praying, and our gathering our family in together for church. Whether it's a family of one or a family of ten, listen, it's church time. It's church time. Get, get together and, and talk to the Lord and spend some time with Him. Let's pray this evening. As we go to the Lord in prayer, here's my prayer. If you're saved this evening, you've trusted Christ, your personal Savior, that you would just be motivated by His love, His sacrifice, and His promise to just keep on moving forward. If you've never trusted Christ, your personal Savior, friend, I, I want to invite you to call upon the name of the Lord. I want to invite you to say in your heart to God, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I know you died for me. I know that if, if, if you died for all, then that means all are sinners. 
and all have come short of the glory of God. But I'm asking you to be my Savior. And tonight, if you ask Jesus to save you, put your trust in Him, friend. Not in this preacher, not in this church, not in the Catholic church, not in, listen, not in some beads or a crucifix or a prayer or holy water or baptism or church membership or this pastor, Baptist pastor or a, a pope or Methodist or whoever. It doesn't matter. You put your faith in Jesus and you trust Him. He's the one that died for you. I didn't. He died for you. He's the one that rose again. And only he can save you. And if you'll trust him, he'll make you his child and forgive you of your sins. And right now, while I pray, why don't you pray and ask Jesus to be your Savior. Father in heaven, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us your truth. Lord, help us to keep on going for you. Help us, uh, Lord, as, as Victory Baptist Church, that we would just keep on going, that we will not stop, that we'll keep moving forward, keep on loving you. And when this whole thing is over, that we will be stronger, Lord, that we will be more dedicated, that we will appreciate you and your church even more. Lord, we ask if there's somebody that doesn't know you as their Savior, that today they would call upon you and be saved, that they would pray there in their home that they're a sinner and that they're trusting you to be their Savior. And I pray that they would let us know that they'd call the church and let us know. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, if you've trusted Christ as your personal Savior today, Please call the church. Let us know. We can mail some information to you that would help you grow in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And when this whole thing's over, uh, we'd like to invite you here. You can certainly come on a Sunday morning to the drive-in church. Uh, the drive-in church is a little bit different. Everybody just stays in their car. We don't have the church open, you know, restrooms and stuff like that. There's no restrooms. There's no kind of coming in and out. But everybody just kind of stay in your car. But I'll still get to meet you. And, uh, and certainly I'll be praying for you. Until, uh, until I see you on Sunday, church, I love you. I'm praying for you. God bless you.